All pilots operating in the combat zone are subject to the highly sophisticated enemy air defense forces that are deployed to destroy or nullify the effectiveness of our aircraft. The threat includes a likely scenario of communications jamming, acquisition by early warning and tracking radars, and attacks by air defense artillery, missile, and gun systems. Enemy air defense weapons maintain coverage for their associated maneuver force with short-range weapons positioned to maintain point coverage, and longer-range weapons provide a multi-level umbrella over the battlefield. Their long-range radar-directed systems effectively deny medium and high-altitude attacks by our strike aircraft, while their short-range missiles will be employed in combination with guns against aircraft operating near the forward line owned troops. Enemy weapon systems employ radar and optical modes for minimum radiation exposure. Plus, a variety of missile guidance schemes with a broad spectrum of radar frequencies help counter chaff and jamming. Observers fill any gaps in the electronic surveillance screen. The enemy air defense picture is further reinforced by soldiers who are trained in aircraft recognition and their combat vehicles, which incorporate air defense capable systems. Aviation elements cannot expect to survive on the high intensity battlefield if they expose themselves more than momentarily to these weapons. Direct and indirect fire support should be made available to cover strike fighters and aviation formations moving forward over predetermined routes and just prior to their entry into the target or objective area. Additionally, dedicated elements of the attacking force will likely be needed to engage any undetected enemy air defense weapons that open up. It will not be enough to defeat one gun or missile system obscure optics, or to jam a limited frequency spectrum. A dedicated effort must be made to destroy all enemy air defense elements within a given area as soon as they are detected, or when they are near enough to engage our close air support aircraft. Localized joint suppression of enemy air defenses permits the conduct of close air support and tactical aviation activities by protecting friendly aircraft during an air operation or when transiting the flock. This is accomplished by destroying, neutralizing, or temporarily degrading their effectiveness by physical attack or electronic warfare. Typical CAD targets in the forward area include self-propelled radar-controlled guns deployed just behind leading tanks and APCs, towed short-range guns which cover frontline elements, man portable weapons protecting point targets, short-range missile carriers deployed forward with armored columns and in the rear of the first echelon area, low and medium altitude guns and missiles with the leading divisions providing forward support and protecting critical rear area assets, and acquisition and fire control radars with their associated control and communications centers. These targets are normally suppressed by a combination of means. This involves destructive attacks against enemy equipment and personnel, which render these incapable of continuing an operation, and disruptive attacks, which temporarily degrade, deceive, or neutralize enemy systems by jamming, chaff, flares, deception, and flight evasion tactics. The major problems surrounding localized CAD activities include large numbers of undetectable handheld weapons spread throughout the forward area and concentrated around vital points. The difficulty in acquiring the locations of a large number of camouflaged systems with enough accuracy to permit effective engagement by indirect fire. High consumption rates of artillery ammunition for target neutralization and fire units engaged in suppression shoots will not be available to support other division operations and will likely receive retaliatory fire. Both land and air forces have varying degrees of capability to suppress enemy air defenses. 
This capability is enhanced by joint planning and coordination by various staffs and by conducting operations within defined areas of responsibility. The Land Force's operational responsibility for SEAD activities lies primarily in the area of the flot against those threats which can be engaged by observed fire and ground-based jammers. Ground formations integrate a SEAD effort into each close air support and tactical aviation operation and disseminate any acquired intelligence on enemy air defense systems to the appropriate aviation and air force agencies. The SEAD effort includes joint planning to help identify those elements of the enemy's air defenses that will be attacked and in what priority, allocation of land-based resources in support of SEAD activities, and joint conduct of both in-depth activities against enemy standoff systems and localized activities against close-in systems. The division commander is responsible for the conduct of SEAD operations within his area of influence. These are affected by the Fire Support Coordination Center. The FSCC resolves airspace conflicts, maintains a priority SEAD list, and ensures airspace users coordinate their activities with those responsible for active suppression. In addition, it plans an effective response to SEAD requests, advises on the level of support available, and jointly makes decisions on whether to proceed or cancel a requested SEAD activity. Interested persons in the FSCC include artillery personnel for the planning of general fire tasks, the artillery intelligence officer for the application of counter-bombardment tasks against enemy air defense targets, the aviation representative who plans and controls division assigned aviation resources. The tactical air liaison representative who plans and controls allocated close air support sorties. And the electronic warfare representative who directs the ECM method. The task is assisted by the G2 staff who provide intelligence relating to the location of active enemy air defense elements, the current enemy ground or air threat, an assessment of target engagement priorities, and recommendations for drone and remotely piloted vehicle missions. The air liaison officer also assists by alerting the FSCC on air assets that will be arriving over the division's operational area and ensuring that the planned application of SEAD resources will at least meet the designated mission risk criteria. The Air Force retains overall responsibility for planning the joint SEAD effort integral to the structure of each air mission, the determination of the local threat priorities, and the collection and dissemination of intelligence on enemy air defenses. These functions are handled by the Corps Air Support Operations Center and by tactical air control parties assigned to divisions and brigades, which also nominate targets, advise on weapons or ordnance, initiate target requests, keep order of battle data, oversee mission results, and coordinate the air input to SEAD activities. The Air Force's execution responsibility begins at the forward limit of observed fire and extends to the unobserved limits of the support which may be provided by land force indirect fire weapons and continues in depth to the range of its tactical aircraft. It is achieved by visual sensor target indication from aircraft, by attack fighter and helicopter weapons platforms employing a variety of ordnance and with specialized ECM aircraft. Air Force directed attacks are best conducted by specialist aircraft whose crews are trained to locate, attack, and neutralize enemy ground-based radar-directed systems, including command, control, and communications assets. These attacks involve jamming radar frequencies, dropping chaff to mask radar returns, launching anti-radiation missiles, and directing airstrikes against known AD elements. Enemy air defense weapons and their associated equipment and facilities are handled as another target on the battlefield. Their neutralization is a form of counter-bombardment 
that will likely be required in support of our own airstrikes, air mobile, or air assault operations. The methods of planning for and executing CAD requirements are no different than those used to suppress hostile artillery fire with targets being engaged in accordance with priorities established by the operational commanders. 